Denver versus Fort Collins, big city, college town. Who wins in the showdown for best place to get a job, raise a family, retire? Hey everybody, it's Allison Wall with Live South Denver, your real estate strategist and realtor for the South Denver area. I have been lucky enough to live in both places. I now live in Denver, I live in South Denver. I've been here for well over 20 years. I came to Colorado to go to grad school and went to CSU in Fort Collins. Actually, probably the more accurate way to say it would be, I went to CSU as an excuse to come to Colorado. That's actually what happened, is I just wanted to get out of Florida. I wanted to be in Colorado, and I was like, that looks great, I'll go to grad school there. And I never left. A lot of folks looking to move to Colorado feel like I did back then. They just wanna to get to Colorado. Then we're trying to figure out where is the right spot. So Denver is not always the one and only location that people are looking to move. So we're gonna look at Denver versus Fort Collins in this video. First up and most obvious, Fort Collins is a college town, and there is a lot of good stuff that comes with that. You've got the sports associated with the university. You'll have great lectures and educational opportunities. There are all sorts of arts that are connected to a university, and probably the most favorite part of all is that a college town has a lot of music to it, and Fort Collins is no stranger to great music. And all of this is conveniently packaged into a dense area. Fort Collins is not big, so it's easy to get to an event. It's easy to get into the Fort Collins downtown, old town area, which is absolutely epic. It's easy to get to the university. So that is very different than when you head into a Denver metro area and things are generally more spread apart. Fort Collins is also a very family friendly town. It's not all college all the time. It's not living and dying on the nine month swing of students coming in and out, the four year cycle of students moving in and out. The town has good job infrastructure and is so close to nature that it really is a draw in and of itself to families and people who just want something that's a little off the beaten path from Denver itself. So it is a town destination that is separate from just the university. Now, when we talk about Denver, I'm going to say this time, let's talk about South Denver area. Let's talk about my stomping grounds. And the other part of the reason is when people are comparing Denver to Fort Collins, they're rarely comparing Fort Collins and all of its small townness to the core of Denver, downtown Denver, Denver proper. They're usually looking at some of the different suburbs around the area. So we're gonna dive into South Denver since it's where I've been pretty much since I left university. I actually moved into South Denver right away. I never jumped into Wash Park, downtown. I had a job that brought me right down here into South Denver and have been here ever since. South Denver is gonna feel both very similar and very different from Fort Collins. When it comes to the family friendly side of things, we're gonna find that Castle Rock, Highlands Ranch, Parker are very similar to what you would find in Fort Collins. We've got neighborhoods with tree-lined streets, we've got festivals, we've got kids out on bikes, people walking with their dogs, lots of people out enjoying nature. You'll find plenty of neighborhoods with open space and adults sitting out in front of the houses at night with fire pits and their beverage of choice with their friends. So very connected communities in many of these places. Where things feel very different is the college town piece. With Fort Collins being dense, close, small, it's so easy to engage in university life. It's so easy to hop over to a game and watch football, to watch the sports, to engage in the activities and feel like you are separate from the university when you don't want to be involved in traffic, if you want to avoid that, and then engage in all of the fun events. Well, there is not much in the way of university in Denver. We've got DU hockey, Outside of that, you're gonna go to Boulder. You're gonna go to Fort Collins. So down in the suburbs, it pulls you farther away from that. You're a little farther from an entertaining lecture. You're not as close to arts on a regular basis. The sports you're involved in are usually your kids' own sports or you're headed up to a Broncos game or out to a college game. We don't have to work so hard for music. We have Fiddler's Green, we have Red Rocks, but we still don't have as much in the way of music right down the street as you'll find when you're in a college town and all of the bars with music nearby. All right, let's talk people, educated people. This conversation comes up quite a bit with my folks, whether they're retiring and have been in the upper echelons of business, they want to be around other intelligent people, or if they're coming here with kids, 
They want to know that they're going to be around educated people because those are the ones that care about schools. So they know their kids are going to be with other like-minded parents who are highly educated, have kids who are, you know, reading early, doing well, have parents who care at home, and it's going to raise up everything for their own children. So the education level is often actually a topic of interest to many of the folks that I'm talking to. Lucky you, Colorado is the second most educated state in the US, only Massachusetts beats us out. So whether you choose to live in Fort Collins or Denver, you're going to fare just fine. However, the stats are like this. In Fort Collins, 59% of the population holds a bachelor's degree or higher. In South Denver, we have Castle Pines coming in at 81% of the population holding a bachelor's degree or better. In Highlands Ranch, 65% of that group have a bachelor's degree or better. And Parker comes in at 54% having a bachelor degree or better. All of us far exceed the national average of 33% of the population holding a bachelor's degree or higher. So where do all these best and brightest work? What are the industries? Where are the jobs? I mean, with Fort Collins being a much smaller town, your first thought, right, goes to the university, but that's not it. There is CSU, there is that university. Right across the highway over in Greeley, there is UNC, another university. So there's a lot of driving back and forth, people living in the area in general, the area at large, and serving at either university. But there are also jobs related to CSU spinoff startups. Numerous tech companies call Fort Collins home. Many of you may know that Fort Collins was the home to craft breweries. I mean, that is where the whole thing started. So there are still some major craft breweries that are home in Fort Collins and they employ a lot of people. And there's a major healthcare system in Fort Collins that is the employer of a large group of people there as well. And is a separate system than a lot of what we see down here in the Denver market. Denver is a widely diversified market. We used to be just oil and gas. So we would go like this every time the oil and gas industry boomed and busted, but that is no longer the case. We are aerospace, aviation, IT, telecommunications, healthcare, financial services, of course, tourism. A lot of that's up in the mountains, but many of those bases are down here in the Denver metro area as well. That aerospace division is often connected to military contracts. I work with a lot of folks who are military adjacent, maybe military retired and on contract work and moving in from all over the world actually to come and work in Space Force, to work at Buckley. So these core industries have fingers in a lot of other industries here in the Denver market. A big shout out to the Colorado culture and that we have always been a leader in remote work. That was true well before COVID and it helps because those in Fort Collins can still engage in the Denver job market and just stay in Fort Collins. So I don't want to kind of make this look like our longer list of industries in Denver means you by default have to be looking only in the Denver market. We will have a longer commute, however, if you do have to come into the office. But with remote work the way it is, you may be able to only pop in two, four times a month, and that commute is getting better and better all the time. There is a toll road that stretches the majority of the way between Denver and Fort Collins, and if you're willing to pony up the bucks to take it and avoid the traffic the few times a month you may have to come in, which I am all the time. I don't have to take the highway during traffic hour. And when I do for work, I will pay that toll every single time. It's worth it. Then I would say, if you love the Fort Collins area, the vibe, the kind of hippiness, the college town, and you know that your industry really treasures remote work and it's not something you're worried about losing, then I would say continue to look in both markets because it's an hour commute, hour and 15 minute commute when the traffic's flowing well. It can be almost two hours if the traffic's rough. But as we continue to smooth out this toll lane between Denver and Fort Collins, it really does kind of shrink down and compress the stress points between the two. So that's a huge help. The distance, by the way, between these two cities runs about 65 miles. Now, if we add in the South Denver suburb, we've added on another, you know, 25 or so. So 65 is from downtown Denver to Fort Collins. Drive time from downtown Denver to Fort Collins. Again, we're running in an hour, 10 hour and 15 minutes with smooth traffic. But if I do not hit any traffic and I leave South Denver and head to Fort Collins, I can do it in about an hour 40, hour 45. 
All right, I'm gonna throw some dirty talk your way. Mm -hmm. With it being an election year, politics come up a lot more often. People care more and more and more about the political bent of where they're moving. As they have left political hot spots and want something more centric, they know that finding a place that is centric is getting harder. And Colorado has shown up as a place that has often been center. We were a purple state for a really long time. We don't tend to be a purple state in voting anymore, but there are a lot of places you can be in the Denver metro area that are still pretty centric. And there are places that are not across the state centric at all. So this map will give you a feel of what it looks like to be in any of the different counties in the state. You can see that as you head to one edge or the other, you find places that lean very heavily in one direction. You can see if you're in certain counties in the mountains or toward Boulder, it leans heavily in one direction. But as we look up to the top, which is where Fort Collins is in Larimer County, it's really quite centric. It just leans a little toward the blue. When we come down and look at Douglas County, pretty centric, it just leans a little slightly toward the red. And I'll tell you from being in both places that I don't get a lot of politics. Now, I personally don't want to talk about them, so I don't engage. You can, there are people who want to, but there are not a lot of flags, not a lot of yard signs, not a lot of posters. HOAs help with that too. So you can engage at the level you want, but it's a pretty peaceable, easygoing, just kind of neutral environment. You'll just see it in certain places and certain elections. Uh, school boards is one where it can come up. And you know who's gonna be in office representing you locally? Obviously, yes, it will show up. But your day-to-day -day living just feels kind of neutral. As you look at the map around South Denver, you see you actually have a lot of diversity to choose from. So if you don't like anything leaning red, you have got plenty of options that lean blue. So there is choice for you to be had in the South Denver area. When it comes to safety, neither area is throwing up a red flag. We have the South Denver area, particularly Douglas County, coming in dark green on this ADT crime map, which means they're ranking well below average in crime data. And then Fort Collins, Larimer County coming in light green. But my opinion on this is look how much light green there is across this whole northern swath of the map. I'm curious if they actually have enough data to rank it. I think there would be parts of Fort Collins, parts of these smaller towns up in Larimer County that would come in dark green just because of the size of the towns and my experience of being there that long ago and we're seeing nature areas to the west of there also showing up light green. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that there's just not enough data. I've overlaid a little bit of opinion there for you. If you want more facts, I can give you resources where you can dig in on different layers for all the different parts of Colorado that you may be looking into for crime stats. But either way, we have no red flags in terms of safety for either of these areas. And one of the reasons safety is of such interest to people is because they want to feel like they can walk around the area they're going to live in, right? You want to walk in downtown Fort Collins. You want to walk around your neighborhood wherever you are in Denver. Let's just say South Denver. Castle Rock has a downtown. Parker has a downtown. We have all sorts of trails and open space. So let's look at the walk scores of these different areas. Fort Collins gets a walk score of 67. It's considered somewhat walkable. It gets an outrageously good bike score though, which is awesome for a college town. I'm kind of surprised it gets a score as high as a 67. I didn't really feel like it was that walkable of a town. Yes, campus is walkable. If you live right near downtown, that part's walkable, but it doesn't have everything that you need. It has improved and enhanced in terms of some amenities in the downtown area, but overall, it's still a pretty suburban feeling, family-oriented town that needs a car. I would not have given it a 67. In South Denver, Highlands Ranch gets a walk score of 69. Also, I think that's a little high, but Highlands Ranch does have pockets that you can walk to from your neighborhood. You can get to a Target. From your neighborhood, you can get to a coffee shop. You can easily get to grocery stores. They are everywhere. However, if you think that you're going to survive without a car living in the suburbs, probably not. Castle Rock gets a walk score of 83. They do have a couple hubs where you could certainly walk to and really enjoy yourself. Again, 
It is so far from Denver and the light rail does not go there. You actually have more access to public transit in Highlands Ranch than you do Castle Rock, but the walk score is better in Castle Rock. So I'm starting to question these walk scores. Castle Rock's way cool, awesome downtown. It really would give Fort Collins a run for its money and we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. But I would say overall, you cannot run your whole life around this walk score. You need a car, you need a vehicle, you're gonna need Uber at least. And then Lone Tree has a walk score of 36. And counterintuitively, I would say Lone Tree has one of our best realistic walk scores of all of these. There is an entire hub. Lone Tree has built itself around a walkable lifestyle. They have this whole Ridgegate side of the community in Lone Tree that is meant to be walkable. It is bikeable, it is walkable, and they are continuing to expand it. Now, yes, there are parts that are a little separated from this section, but if you were to blend those two, this should lift the score even well above 37. So just some interesting dynamics. None of this is a slam on Fort Collins. It is just to point out that you can achieve walkability and an interesting walkable lifestyle in places in the south suburbs as well. Okay, a move to Colorado means you'll be outdoors a lot. You want that walk score. You plan to enjoy the nature, at least for most people. And I was outside all the time, both when I was a student and I'm outside all the time now too. So what is the weather like in each location? Fort Collins, the north half of the state is definitely drier than what it's like as you move down toward Denver and a little bit more south. That doesn't stay true. It's not like the more south you go toward Pueblo, New Mexico, it continues to get wetter. So there's, it's kind of like dry, moist, dry again. So we're kind of in the band here in the South Denver area, the Denver Metro where it's a little more wet, but it is drier up in the Fort Collins area. They get an average of 16 inches of rain and 48 inches of snow a year. Whereas down here, we're getting 77 inches of snow a year on average and 18 or 19 inches of rain. To me, the biggest difference of all is the wind. It is so much windier up in Fort Collins. It's still windy down here. Parker is windy. People will complain and say, Parker is windier than Highlands Ranch. Castle Rock is windier than Parker. You know, if you don't like the wind, don't live here. And they're comparing it to each of these individual pockets across South Denver. No one is comparing how less windy it is down here to Fort Collins. According to some stats, Fort Collins is the windiest city in all of Colorado based on average wind speed. When we look at wind gusts, I mean, it just blows through there. There were points in time when we would walk to class. This is old person days. We had backpacks full of books. We couldn't do things on, you know, eBooks and things like that. We'd be laden down with these heavy backpacks locking arms because the wind would be tunneling through buildings. And if we took a step at the wrong time and the wind blew, we would literally be toppling over. It blows like crazy up there. And for any of you, if you've seen any of my other videos, if this isn't your first and you've seen me talk about what I like and don't like about Colorado, wind is my A number one. I hate it. I hate the wind. So it's not why I left Fort Collins. I came for a job. I moved to the city, all of those things. But if I think about where else might I ever live in the state, my mind goes back to how much I hated the wind in Fort Collins, loved everything else. All right, I have saved the biggest, the best for last, cost of living, cost of housing. Let's dive into the numbers. Bestplaces.net gives Fort Collins a cost of living score of 115.7. This means they rank Fort Collins 15.7% more expensive than the US on average. Compared to the Colorado average, they say Fort Collins is 4% more expensive. Salary.com agrees. They put Fort Collins at 118% of the US average or 18% more expensive than we would find on the average nationally. You and I both know Denver is gonna be more expensive than Fort Collins, so we'll use that as our baseline. And now we'll start to compare what it looks like for Fort Collins versus Denver. Fort Collins is 18% cheaper than living in Parker, and all of that is attributable to the median housing cost. So houses are 18% cheaper in Fort Collins than you'll find in the Parker area. Importantly though, we're gonna talk about median household income between the two areas because that makes a large difference in what it means to live in Fort Collins or Denver. The median household income in Parker is 45% more than what it is in Fort Collins. 
The cost of living is 15% less in Fort Collins versus Castle Rock. The median home price in Fort Collins is 20% less than it is in Castle Rock, but the Castle Rock households tend to fare far better. Their median household income is 56% more than what is found in Fort Collins. Highlands Ranch comes in at almost 23% more expensive than Fort Collins. Most of that is thanks to home prices because homes in Highlands Ranch are about 30% more expensive than they are in Fort Collins. But the median household income in Highlands Ranch is 70% higher than the median household income in Fort Collins. If you're moving out here to retire and there's gonna be no income, it absolutely beats your advantage to move to Fort Collins. If you're moving out here and looking for a job, See where they shake out income wise. If they're paying on par, again, it may work to your advantage to move to Fort Collins. Or if they're paying on par and you can work remote, it may work to your advantage to move to Fort Collins. But if you're seeing a significant increase in the pay, it seems to bear out that you're going to win living in Denver. And one of the conversations I have with my younger folks who are looking at numerous potential job changes before they settle into a last job, or they know they may not even live in Denver forever because they're just early in their trajectory, is they want to be in the city because they know that companies change, ownership changes, what they may want to do may change, or they're on a project base and they may only be with their company for two years and they like the flexibility. And so Denver offers something different because of what it looks like in terms of income. We consistently are seeing that incomes are outperforming in the Denver market, who is living in Denver, what Denver seems to offer in terms of education and opportunity. If you like Fort Collins, if you visit it, if someone's told you you would love it, and you're thinking, where else could I get something at least similar? I would say Castle Rock and Parker would be the top two choices, and out of those, I would rank Castle Rock first. It is farthest from Denver, just like Fort Collins is pretty far from Denver. So if you do have to drive into the city, it's gonna be a fairly long commute. However, Castle Rock has an identity of its own. You don't really have to leave unless you need something or you're going to the foothills, you're gonna go play in the mountains, you're heading into Denver for an event. Everything is all in case there. It has a downtown, they put on events, it has a culture. It really has something special, just like you would find in Fort Collins. Parker is maturing into that. It has a downtown, it's small. They're doing a lot, it's growing. The thing about Parker is it's a little bit slower paced. It's a little bit more spread out. It's easy to find a niche and a little location where you can connect in your neighborhood. It's just a little more chill. Castle Rock is bigger and it can be a little bit faster paced. I-25 cuts through it, there's a little more traffic. So I would say check out both and see which one resonates with you more. And here are some videos that you might find helpful if you'd like to chat about what might be the right place for you as you explore Colorado, please reach out. You know, I'd always love to connect. And I will see y'all next week.